Oh, welcome back, Gems, to another wonderful episode of the Grateful Gem Podcast. I am your host, Jasmine Chanel, and I can't wait for you to hear today's topic. Gems are definitely going to be dropped, so make sure you tune in and stick around. Let's get into it. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, <laughs> whichever occurs and fits to your situation use it and take it um i'm so excited guys that you're here listening to this podcast episode i can't wait to get into the topic today um today's topic is going to be about imposter syndrome um just feeling like the things or the places that you're at you don't deserve um for me that has been who child (laughs) <laughs> that has been a big, big issue. Um, As I stated in the last couple of my episodes, and if you have not listened to the previous episode, please pause this, go back. If you this is your first episode, you can play this one to get a little taste of what I be telling y'all. <laughs> but if not, go back to the beginning so you can hear um, the beginning episodes. And you may find something that relates to you more currently where you're at in your life. Um, However... Again, today's topic is about imposter syndrome. So, I'm in a place in my life where I can genuinely, authentically say, I have to speak slowly because I talk with my tongue, and words be coming out, and y'all will be on the other end like, well, girl, what was that you just said? I don't know what you said. That wasn't even a word. (laughs) So, when when I say certain words, I have to say them slowly because my tongue will not allow me to speak proper English. Um, However... Um, I can't wait to talk about the imposter syndrome. I have been struggling with this for the past month. Um, if I'm being honest, I have struggled with this in the past month. And just feeling like, you know, I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. I don't deserve happiness. I don't deserve to be at a place where I can be happy. Um, just all of those things, you know, feeling like, oh, you know, who do you think you are? You know, this isn't even for you, you know. Yeah, this is uh, this is happening, but do you deserve it? Like that's that's where I've been at. Um, and I had a therapy session with my therapist or my counselor, rather, um, whichever one you use. <laughs> but I had a meeting with her last week, and we haven't talked in like two or three weeks. I normally do it like every two weeks or whatever, but I had to wait or whatever. So I had an appointment last Wednesday and. I was telling her, I said, you know, just telling her everything that's going on in my life. And she was like, Jasmine, like, you are at a better state of mind. She was like, you're in a better state all around. She was like, God is really working in your life. And she was like, but the one thing that I hear you say, she was like, you're doubting that you deserve it. She was like, you're questioning your happiness and you're expecting something bad to happen. And I told her, I said, you're absolutely correct. I said, I am because I said, when I thought I was genuinely happy, when I thought I was at a place where I'm just so happy, I'm just the best I can be. My world came crashing down. Um, just a little backstory. If you haven't, you know, been up on the episodes, but since last last year, once I got pregnant, um, I was at that point, you know, I was like, oh, I'm doing great. You know, my mindset is better. I'm better. Um, it's just a all around big thing. You know, I'm, I'm doing better. I'm well. And I got pregnant. <laughs> I got pregnant, wasn't expecting to get pregnant. And my pregnancy was just so rough. I was sad. I cried every day. Um, I had anxiety really bad. I didn't want to be alone. I felt stagnant in my life. I still I felt like a failure. Um, and then after I had my son, the best part about being pregnant was labor, like delivery when he got here. My son is the biggest blessing in my life. Um, I had to go through a hard journey within those six nine months, but it was well worth it, you know, because at that time I decided when I was like five months that I was gonna heal correctly that I was going to choose better outcomes for myself so that I could be the best mom that my son needed me to be. And in order for me to be the best version of my, uh, me being a mom, I had to be the best version of myself. So I had to do some reflecting. And sometimes if we're being honest, that can be very hard. Um, looking at yourself in the mirror and asking yourself, am I really the problem? Like, is this not working out because of me? And actually answering that and looking back over it and being real with yourself and saying, yeah, girl, yeah, boy, guy, male, you know, female, 
yeah, you're the problem, you know. Um, that was a hard pill to swallow, you know. So I decided, you know, I'm going to work on healing. I'm going to work on letting go. I'm going to work on forgiveness. I'm going to work on protecting my peace. Um, a lot of things were sent to destroy me, you know, within those nine months. But, and I'm not going to say I always had the best attitude, but I didn't completely give up. I fell a few times, you know, but I didn't give up. And it got harder, you know, as I, after I had my son, you know, I was there in another moment thinking, okay, I'm better, you know, but I got back into the state of, you know, just wanting to be alone, just getting upset, having anxiety, um, just trying to be the best mother that I could be, just trying to do all these things in my strength. Well, really, I didn't have any strength left. I didn't have any fight to give because I felt like I was drained for nine months. Um, and just aside from that, before me getting pregnant, um, a couple months before that, it was just, it was a lot. So it's like, okay, to be in a place where I'm like, okay, I'm happy. I'm good. I'm going to do this, this, and this. And then to find out I was pregnant, like that literally crashed my world, you know? I was just heartbroken, you know, like I said, I cry every day and it just was not a good place to be at. So now here I am, um, I would say like June from June up until last month was just really, really, really hard. Like it was really hard for me. Um, me and my son's father, we were just going at each other's neck back and forth. I didn't understand what that was about because I just feel like we're not those people that, have to have a bad relationship with each other in order to correctly show up for our son. And to be honest, you know, I still love him and I believe that he still loves me. So, and I tell him all the time, I'm like, I don't understand why this has to be so hard. You know, I just want to get to a point where we can correctly show up for our son the way that we need to, because I'm going to have to see you for the rest of my life because it doesn't just stop when he gets 18, when he gets married, when he has his first child, when he graduates high school, when he graduates college, when he moves out, you know, all those big milestones in his life, you're going to be there because you're his dad. Um, That's just how life works, right? So um, I made the decision. I said, you know, no matter how hard it gets, I'm not going to give up, you know, having a better relationship. Like I'm going to start with myself. I can't change how he show up, but I can change how I show up. And to be honest, that was hard because, oh, if you know him, he is just, oh, sometimes he could be a pill to swallow, you know, but when he's in a good mindset, when he's not, you know, he's, he's fine, you know, he's great. But when he's not, he's not, it's like, it's one of those situations where like, it, when it's good, it's good, but when it's bad, it's bad. Like, and it's hard to continuously do the right thing when you have something out of your control, Like, you can't control how people act. You can't control whether someone wants to do what you're doing or not. But you can control whether you're going to give up. And it was hard, you know, getting to a point where it's just, okay, Jasmine, I'm not going to shake what I'm doing because of somebody else's action. And not just with him, with my family. You know, I'm a person where something happened and I feel disrespected. I'm going to speak on it. That's just me. Because I feel like, for one, why are you playing with me? (laughs) You know? For two, you know not to play with me. For three back to one or two because what like I'm just not a person I've always been outspoken I've always been an extrovert um but now I'm learning that and this is something that he actually taught me that everything doesn't deserve a response and I remember like sometimes like you guys know I'm letting y'all into my personal business (laughs) but um there were times where we used to get in arguments and I would just be yelling and going off and cussing Lord forgive me but I'm being real and he would just get up and walk out of the room. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like, I'm talking. Yeah, okay, I'm not in the best moment. But I'm pissed off. Like, I'm frustrated. And I, I feel like you don't hear me when I come to you correctly. So, now I'm at a point where I learned that, for one, that's not good behavior. For two, I don't have to respond to everything. Um, And honestly, it's been the best decision that I've made for my life to just protect my peace and to protect, you know, the fact that I'm working on me. And in the middle of when you, whenever you're trying to correct something, something is always going to come up to get you to go back to that same state of mind. People are going to look at you as the person that you used to present yourself as. And then that's even harder too, because, um, when you, change your mind and say, okay, I'm going to do this better. I'm going to do this the right way. I'm going to, you know, take the steps it needs to be taken in order to move correctly. People, sometimes people don't see that. You can do something the correct way and people will still see the old you. So 
um, like I said, now I'm just, I'm in a place where I'm just, and I, I remember praying, like, after I had my son, even when I was, when I was pregnant, I always prayed, and I said, Lord, I just want to be happy, like, I want to be happy, genuinely happy, not because of what I have, not because of what I make, not because of I'm a mom, not because of, you know, the small things, but just, I just want to wake up, even if I have nothing, I want to be happy. Like, aside from what I feel, aside from what it looks like, I want to be happy. And the other day, I was riding down the road, and I really, I had a moment with the Lord, and I said, Lord, I just want to thank you, because I'm not where I want to be in life, but I'm happy. Like, I'm happy. Um, I just had to move out of my apartment a couple months, back in July, end of July, beginning of August. Um, That was devastating for me, because, you know, I had an issue at my apartments, and, they can, they didn't have another apartment for me. I couldn't find anything within a decent time frame. So, you know, I had to move out, put my stuff in storage, and I'm, you know, just currently staying at a friend's house until, you know, December. And from there, I'll just leave or whatever. Because right now, I'm just stacking my money, you know, praying to the Lord on what I should do. But that was a hard decision for me because, for one, I'm grown. For two, I have a son now. So, it's just like, you know, I don't want to be in somebody's space feel like I'm taking up their time. I'm taking up their space. My son is aggravating them. Like, you know, even though I don't think he is, it's just that imposter syndrome. Like, it's like, you shouldn't be here. Like, you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have let your apartment go. You should have just stayed there. Like, but in this the situation with my apartment, it was not, there was no way I was going to stay there. Like, that's not, for me, that's not a livable situation. You know, I just couldn't do it. So that was devastating for me. Um, and then, you know, I got back in the mindset of what am I doing? Like, God, why is this happening to me? Like, I believed you. I prayed. I did what you wanted me to do. And I'm still here feeling just dissatisfied with my life. And so not only did I have to go from, you know, living on my own to moving with somebody else temporarily. Um, but I also had to let my car go. <laughs> crazy thing was I had two more payments to pay it off but I ended up paying it off and just selling it and get the money for it because it didn't make sense to get it fixed I had just this year got everything done and like and I keep my maintenance up in my car even when I go take my car they're like oh your car's in great shape so the fact that I had an issue when I know that I completely do the services and stuff was just like heartbreak I was just like lord here we go again like I just can't win for losing like I don't know what I'm doing like what is this so um, I end up, you know, paying my car off and selling it, putting the money in my savings. And so now it's just, where do I go? You know, what decisions do I need to make in order to move? And then, of course, I'm going to get me another car. But it's just like, in all of those aspects, it's like, ugh, you know? And I woke up the other day and I said, Lord, I, like I said, I'm not where I want to be and I don't have the things that I used to have, but I'm genuinely happy. I'm happy because I'm taking the steps to protect my peace. I'm learning how to communicate correctly. I'm learning how to be understanding. I'm learning how to, you know, look at something from somebody else's point of view. I'm learning how to, you know, say what I want to say, but in a correct way. I'm learning how to let go and forgive. Um, I just recently, I went over to one of my family members' house on my dad's side because I I completely stopped talking to my dad's side. And, um, Just because I was just like, you know what? I'm just in a mind where I just, I can't do this. But... Um, I went over there yesterday, and it it felt really good. Like, they, nobody had seen my son, and, you know, I went over to see one of my aunties and my little cousins, and we had a great time just talking, catching up. And so I told myself, I said, you know what, I'm going to make it my business to continue to come around more, bring my son around, because at the end of the day, you guys are his family. And I think about when I was younger, my dad, you know, I'm pretty sure there was a lot of things that happened that I didn't know about when I was a child. But me and my sister, you know, our dad... He he brought us around our family. You know, we were at my great grandma's house for Christmas, Thanksgiving, you know, um, just general. Like my auntie that I went to yesterday when I was little, I used to just stay over there all the time. Like I used to stay over there. And I just loved being around him. So to just catch up with her was just like, Oh man, like and I told her, I said, you know, I don't know what happened but you know, I'm gonna try my best to continue to keep coming around you guys because we are family, you know, and I have to learn to just let go and forgive and it's not anything that she did. It was just like everything just I had so many things going to my head but yesterday I was on my way home and I was just like I am really happy like and a part of me was just like but do I deserve to be happy like 
I just feel like, who are you? Like, you, what do you mean you happy? Like, girl, please, you ain't happy. Like, like all these things just kept coming in my head. Like, you, what? You happy? And I was just like, God, like, why am I in a place where I'm just content with who I am and I'm thankful for where I'm going, but I don't feel like I deserve it. Like, I don't feel like I deserve to be healing. I don't feel like I deserve to not be broken. I don't feel like I deserve not to have a disappointment. You know, I feel bad for accepting the blessings that God has over my life. And I was just like, why is that? Why? Like, how? That's crazy to me. Like, what do you mean you don't deserve to be happy? Like, girl, you deserve to be happy. You deserve everything that God has for you because he didn't promise you that trials and tribulation wouldn't come. But then your life isn't going to always be bad. But to be honest, I think that is the number one reason why I feel like I don't deserve it. Because to me, I, I my, my life hasn't been rough, you know. Um, it, it was rough. And I just... When I got pregnant, I just told myself, like, when am I ever going to catch a break? Like, when am I going to genuinely be happy? And so now I'm here, and it's just like, I don't feel like I deserve it. Like, I feel like it's too good to be true. This can't be real. Like, I just got to be missing something. Like, something's bound to go wrong because that's just how my life is set up. And then the Lord told me, like, you need to embrace where you're at. Know that you are enough. You deserve this. And I will consistently provide. And wherever you're doubting, wherever you're fearful, um, I will fill your voice. Like, I will continue to let you know that you are worthy. You deserve happiness. Nobody deserves not to be happy. Like, why would you think that you don't deserve that? And so, I just got emotional because I'm like, Lord, like, <sighs> you know, fresh breath of fresh air. Because I'm like, I can't be here like I've never been this happy in my life to say the least I've never been this happy so to be here is just crazy it's like I don't it's weird like I don't feel like I deserve to be here and that's crazy like some of you like girl what but I'm being serious are you loving this episode great don't forget to leave your feedback by rating and leaving a review on apple itunes also don't forget to subscribe anywhere wherever you're listening to this podcast and make sure that you follow us on instagram to keep up in the know of what's going on with the podcast okay let's get back to the episode and i'm getting ready to i don't know i just have so many things that i've just been praying to god about about doing in my life and the the scariest thing that scares me about doing those things is i know that they're they're gonna come to pass and i know that god is gonna help me get to where I need to be in those things but to be honest that scares the life out of me because um, I'm I'm gonna be making a career change but I feel like once I make this career change I'm gonna be doing the best thing that I could ever do for myself it's like here I am praying about financial freedom here I am praying about um you know just being a better person being the best mom that I can be being the best jasmine that I can be and these things are happening and it's just like I don't deserve them like God, why would you, why would you let me pray these things? Like, why would you come through on the prayers that, and I don't even know how to accept it. Like that, that alone is just beyond me. Like I feel so much like an imposter, like girl, please, like, who are you to sit here and say that you deserve these things? How do you know you deserve them? Like you're not perfect. You, you fail. Like you, you do things that you're not supposed to do still. And it's just like, but I'm not perfect, you know, but I do deserve this and I am enough. And wherever I lack, God will supply me the need um, to fill those voids. And I just want to encourage anybody who feels like they are also having imposter syndrome to feel like if you've been successful or if you've gained happiness or if you're just in a different place where you are genuinely happy and you can't accept it. I just have to say this, accept it. Don't let this moment pass you by and you're still sitting here doubting. You're still sitting here worrying. You're still sitting here making issues up that aren't even there because that's what I'm doing. I keep talking myself out of being happy. And like when I was talking to my counselor about it, it was crazy because I was just looking at her like, girl, what? But I'm like, you're telling the truth. Like, I can't enjoy it. And I told her, I said, I'm just at a point where I'm just... I'm blown away. I'm overwhelmed with what God is doing. And I said, I don't know if I'm supposed to keep going or if I should just wait here and wait for God. to. She was like, no. She was like, why would you stop? Why would you not keep going? 
she was like you cannot accept this but you need to she was like because if you don't accept this this moment will pass you by and you're going to consistently be wondering and praying for happiness and you already have it and she was saying that you know just humble yourself to know that you deserve to be happy you deserve this like you've worked so hard she was like you're not the same today you're not the same that you were last week you're not the person that i talked to two months ago you are in a better mindset and she said the things that you are praying for are, god's turning those things around like god is really working in your favor and she was like that's because for one you had the faith to believe it two you put in the work that needs to be done not only did you pray for things for other people but you're working on yourself she was like that's that's always deserving you're always deserving when you can step up to your issues and admit that i'm not perfect but i want to be right like i want to be a better version of myself because god has better for me why do i have to settle for for settle why do I have to settle for less why do I have to doubt myself and continue to have this lifestyle that I can't even be happy in so what happens when you get everything you pray for and you're still not happy what are you supposed to do and I remember I had a conversation with one of my good friends and we were talking about because we're both looking at doing career changes and she was just like I'm just overwhelmed she was like because you know I stepped out on faith and this job position is like moving really fast and she was like you know girl like who do you think you are you talking about being financially free you know uh breaking generational curses uh making a new way for yourself like who do you think you are and I told her I said girl it's crazy that you say that I said because that's how I feel I said that scares me to know that God can really will really come through I said and I feel like that's another reason why I haven't stepped out and did this new venture because I feel like I'm really going to be successful in it and I'm not going to know how to take that and it's like you think about too like other people ain't gonna know how to take that people can't take me down like we're just saying that I'm working on me and there's certain things that I can't do and there's certain ways that I I choose not to you know live my life and there are certain things that I don't tell people for a reason because it's like I don't want to be around people who can't push me into purpose I don't want to be around people who sit in the complainant seat with me who is down and out just like me who can't be grateful for whatever I we have we complain with each other that's not gonna help either one of us and I don't want to be the person that's continuously pushing people into purpose and they just pulling themselves back out pulling themselves back out like I can no longer serve what doesn't serve me and people sometimes people don't know how to accept that so it's just like to think that I can really be in the life that I've prayed for God will if it aligns with what God has for me I can really be there that scares the living crap out of me so it's just like imposter syndrome imposter syndrome all over all over like even with my podcast you guys i had like i had been consistent for a while and then life just happened you know and i stopped recording like i used to um and i told myself i said you know what i'm gonna be consistent even because i told myself when i first did my podcast i said well I'm not going to record when I'm not in the best moods because I don't want people to be like, oh, she just put anything out there. Like, what the heck is she talking about? Like, girl, what? Everything that you put out is just negative. But I told myself, I said, however, I'm going to change my mindset. I'm going to record when I'm going through everything. Every week you will get an episode. They may not always come out on Sundays um, because the last one didn't come out on Sunday. It came out a few days ago, but that was on purpose because I had so many times. I was battling between two different topics that I wanted to talk about because I was like, I don't want to prematurely put this out there and it's not meaningful right now and like i always tell you guys i want to put out things that i feel like is really going to impact your life maybe not today maybe not tomorrow but i just feel like that one it just wasn't time for that so i was battling between the two but you still got a podcast episode last week and so those are the things that um i talked about in the last episode small wins equal big wins okay yeah i didn't post on sunday but i posted I said I stuck to what I said. I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to post consistently. Consistent. There I go with my tongue. Consistently on social media, and it has really been working. Like my listenership has gone up. You know, I've gotten a little bit more followers, which I'm not. I'm not big with followers and likes and stuff like that. However, my goal is to reach as many people that I can with my story to let them know that at the end of the day, the glory doesn't go to me. It goes to God because I couldn't do any of this without God. And that's what this podcast is about. It's about walking the journey with God. And it's not going to look like how you thought it was because you got people out here saying, oh, will you get that call from God? Yes. Say yes to God. It's going to work out. God's going to make a way. And he is. It is going to work out. He is going to make a way. However, what they don't tell you is that it gets harder when you say yes to God. 
Because sometimes God will have you doing things that you don't don't even make sense. He'll put you in places where you don't even qualify on paper. And that's scary. And like imposter syndrome, like red flag, red flag, imposter syndrome all over the place, you know? So um it's I'm telling you, if you're there with me, I let me tell you, I know. But I'm telling you right here, right now, you are worthy. You deserve to be happy. And wherever God is taking you, you deserve it. You deserve it. So you have to forgive yourself. Be humble and say, I deserve this. And just remember to give all glory to God. Because if it wasn't for God, you wouldn't be where you're at. And if you haven't gotten to that place where you're just consistently happy. Or you are happy, but you just keep trying to figure out, well, what is this? Why I can't get, you know, glory out of what I'm doing. Just keep praying and let God use you. Let God speak to you and tell you, you know, what's going on because I was there. And it took for somebody else to pull it, to see it, for me to see it. I always say that sometimes it takes somebody else looking into your situation in order for you to see what you can't, what you don't see. So sometimes it takes talking to the right person for them to see what you need. But regardless, I just want to come over here and encourage you today that you are worthy. You deserve it. Be happy. Content with where you are. Be humble for where you're going and continue to be grateful for what you have. And I will see you guys on the next episode. I love you. Thank you for listening. Share this post or not post, but episode with someone um, that you feel needs to hear it. Don't forget to rate on Apple Apple Podcasts. Um, leave a review because I really want to know that I'm succeeding with you guys. I really want to know if these episodes are meaningful because what I look like sitting here recording for 30, 40 minutes a day and it ain't impacting nobody. It ain't helping nobody. I mean, my listenership are going up, but what does that mean? Like numbers, numbers matter, but at the end of the day, people could just listen to it. I would hate for you to play this whole episode and not get anything out of it. So please let me know. Send me reviews on Instagram if you have it. Facebook if you find it. Message me. Leave a review on Apple Podcast so I can know where you're at, how you feeling. I love you guys again. I'll see you or not see you, but talk to you on the next episode. Don't forget to keep shining as the gems you are. Bye.